Hello, I'm here with Hilmar Refson. He's a uh, Hilmar is a guy I met uh, a year or two ago. He's uh, really initiated with Kundalini, and he is uh, my from from our relationship. He was helping me do some integration work, and I know he's been helping other people too. Hi, Hilmar. How are you doing, man? Hey, how are you doing, Scott? Thanks for having me on here. Yeah, yeah, no, it's cool. I'm doing well. Now, one of the things that's, uh, that's happening, now, Kil uh, Hilmar is offering a, a service which is called, uh, originally it was called the Kundalini Heart Transmission and they've changed the name to the Golden Heart Transmission. And I think one of the things that's going on there is that Kundalini is such like a, is such a, an abstract concept and like sometimes people don't understand it. So one of the things we're trying to do here is like, so Hilmar can sort of explain like his experiences and how that kind of, um, how that kind of integrates with um, how that integrates with uh, other people, because obviously your experiences um, and the way that you interact with this sort of this energy, which is difficult to describe, has a real impact on um, your interaction with other people and also with the heart transmission. And it'll, maybe it will help other people understand. Um, exactly like what the heart transmission is if you can explain what your experience is so maybe maybe a good yeah. thing to do is go back to like go back to your earliest childhood memories or what was your first like interaction with kundalini when did you start thinking about kundalini in the first place well i uh, i started thinking about kundalini um maybe like a, a year after it happened like i wasn't sure like what had happened to me in the beginning, like um, uh, after I had my initial experience, then uh, there was like a period of six months where my brain was rearranging itself and it was getting adjusted to a new energy in my system. And therefore I only have like three or four memories from that six month period. So, and I, I moved between countries and everything <laughs> while that happened. So that's uh, pretty weird. So I kind of came to in, in Iceland, and um, yeah, and when uh, when I was there, then I, uh, so when I came to myself after this initial experience, then everything was just open. So I could see dead people everywhere. I could see people's lives, like their past, their everything, pretty much. Uh, uh, and um, I felt really insane. Um, and it was really hard to go through. It was really, really hard to go through the first like two years or so. Um, but, you know, in the beginning, I, I really didn't understand what had happened to me. And I tried to find some information and it was kind of hard to find information at the time. Like there wasn't um, an abundance of information about Kundalini out there uh, like 13 years ago. Um, so today there's a lot more info and uh, yeah, so maybe like a year into my experience, I really started to find information about what was happening to me. And uh, yeah, so maybe like actively like studying like the, the whole phenomenon for like 12 years, I guess. Yeah, now a lot of people like will have experiences like my first interaction with Kundalini was doing ayahuasca. Uh, mm. But and a lot of people have that kind of experience. But I don't think your experience was based on that. Like what was what was yeah. Well, I mean, like some people get it from like studying a lot of religious materials, but do you have anything which you think sort of caused it or like initiated the? Yeah, yeah, like um, so. Uh, so I, I can say a few things about it, like the. Um, so firstly, like I started chanting uh, Namioho Renge Kyo, the the Lotus Sutra. Um, daily like two years and nine months prior and, and i had been doing it um, every day for like two three times a day um that's one thing uh that affected this surely um and also like i was contacted by an ascended master like uh, a half a year before I, I was starting to hear things and see things which were weird like throughout my um like two years and nine months, like it was increasing, like the things that I could do before just became more increased. Like I, I've, I, I am, um, uh, I'm born with a certain set of abilities, which I've always had throughout my life, but 
you know, with the, when I start meditating, it, it changes. And when I get the Kundalini experience, then these abilities just explode. So, wow. Uh, yeah. So when those, when that explosion happened, it sounds like something happened to you, which like from what I've read seems kind of typical, like these things happen, you get confused and then you go through a process of change and that change for you yeah. seems to have brought you from Iceland to Denmark. Is that where you ended up? No, it, it, you know, I was in Denmark when I started meditating and okay. when, when, um, and I was, I was visiting Iceland actually when I had my initial Kundalini experience. I was in Iceland, but living in, in Copenhagen at the time. I was in Iceland to uh, meet up with my eldest daughter. Um, and um, so when, when I had the initial experience, but I went back to, 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 to home, like to Denmark, um, right after that happening. So and just, and really just, it, it really just made me extra, extra confused. And life was really weird for some time there. Yeah. Can you explain like, uh like or describe i guess like what like what was the kundalini experience like that that initial one in iceland that happened what was that yeah. experience like yeah so the night before i had meditated like i had chanted for like 50 minutes like almost an hour um and in the morning yeah and i had i had attained some sorts of a different state that night um I remember that, that that was weird. Like I, I felt really, really good though, like that night. And then in the morning I meditated the usual like 20 minutes or so uh, at the time. Um, um, and, and then around like 11.30, it was a Sunday, it was the 22nd of July. Uh, I was standing in my mother's kitchen and, um, and I was about to chug down a glass of water when and I just get these immense shakes all over my body. And I had these tremors like going on for one and a half hour. And, um, and the only thing I could do, like, you know, my, my brain was shaking, my eyes were shaking, uh, my hands were shaking, every cell in my body was shaking. And the only thing I could do was just to, to sit down and meditate. And, and so I did. And then all of a sudden it, it stopped. Um, and, um, and then for like 20 minutes or so, I was feeling, um, extra, extra clear in my body, like, um, like a droplet of water or something like this. And then all of a sudden I get this really powerful burning in my, in my root chakra. And, and it was both burning and freezing at the same time. And I could, I could look at it. And with my eyes open and I could see it, it was yellow and I could close my eyes and I could see it. So this thing was there while I had my eyes closed or open. It did not matter. Yeah. And then it just, you know, made itself wider and filled out the root chakra. And then it started crawling up my spine slowly, filling up every chakra underway. And um, I started doing like... Um, you know, weird movements with my body to make sure that, that, you know, the energy might flow better. And there was like this goddess type being that was there. I could not see her, but, but I could feel her and I could hear her. Wow. And she was kind of calming me while, while, um, while this was happening. And I was like, um, really, um, there was like a part of me that knew that this was okay, but there was another part of me, a bigger part of me that was, really really freaking out like uh, yeah and um and so this goddess was there and she was kind of just with her presence like calming me and it's like i could hear her words that that everything is okay and i'm doing fine and and think you know and this is um yeah it's it's going um uh, it's going well and so on and she calms me down and while this process is happening and then by um my whole nervous system gets filled up with, with the uh, energy and it goes out into my hands and it goes out into my crown chakra and it fills up pretty much everything. So, and I felt like that the next logical thing would happen was that a bolt of lightning might come out of my hand because it was so much power in my body. Like it's, uh, yeah, but uh, after that, I just, I don't remember anything really for like six months or so. Ah. so 
Now, let me ask you a question because, wait, did you say for six months? You didn't remember yeah. anything for six months? Wow. Yeah. yeah. So this sometimes happens with people. Like I remember like reading about Eckhart Tolle, Tolle, for example, and he said after he had his awakening, he basically just walked around the town for two years sitting in park benches and just looking at yeah. plants and flowers and just being aware of like the reality of everything, like as, uh, as it's constructed. Uh, I find myself doing this sometimes, you know, just like you just look at something and you just see it as like this real like projection of pure consciousness. Um, mm. So maybe that's what happened to you. But um, before we move on to that, I'm still interested. Like uh, you said a couple of things there when you were making the description. Um, one was you described this goddess. Um, did you have other visual experiences with that? Or was it mainly, was the goddess visual? It was more of a feeling. And it wasn't so much. Yeah, it, was a, it was a feeling of her presence and a voice that I could hear. I, I did not see anything. Yeah. Like, no. Interesting. Yeah, I think when I had my sweep uh, in Lima, it was it was similar. I didn't really see anything, but it was like feelings. It was like yeah. you just, it's like consciousness. You just know. You just know it's true. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. So for people who haven't had Kundalini but they've done like ayahuasca or LSD or something, you've got this feeling of knowing, and it's just because. It's obvious, like consciousness is pure and you can see it, right? Um, yeah. Also, you mentioned like this cellular awareness, like this cleansing of cellular. Did, yes. did you actually have an awareness at the cellular level? Because sometimes you hear people talking about this, like uh, doing DNA activations and cellular activations. And it sounds for people who've never been involved with Kundalini, it sounds crazy. But did you yeah. have that real visceral experience that something was happening at the cells? Oh, yes. Like, I felt like that every cell in my body was shaking violently. Yeah. Like, and, I, and I've had that happen, like, after this initial experience also, like, that, that I've, I've felt like that on a numerous occasions, actually, actually that, that my cells, like, that every cell in my body is vibrating, like, and, and somehow doing something at the same time. Yeah. And, and I've not always been, uh, been uh, uh, without fear when, it, when that has happened, like... Uh, so it's uh, it's not always easy to go through these kundalini uh, different symptoms and, and stuff but so it seems like you know that was like your first experience i guess <clears throat> now over those years yeah. that was some time ago so that, like, yeah. you've had other um like other like levels which you've moved up to um, yeah. uh over those years and so when you started, it was more just like an awareness, a general awareness of like consciousness and, and the connection of the body at a cellular level with consciousness. Um, but then later on, how did that, how, what kind of uh, awareness did you gain like in later years? Did that like advance a lot? Yeah, I'd say that. Um, um, so like the, there are many different stages in the expression of Kundalini in the body and, and through you, like um, it's always like a therapy session on some level, um, you might say. Um, so there's always, the energy is always working on something. It's always doing something. Um, the initial years, like the first, I uh, guess, yeah, until 2012, then there was a change in my energy. Like before 2012, I had like sporadically, like um, all of a sudden, these these sweeps up the spine. Like it, it came like in splurges. It just exploded up my spine and it just filled up my nervous system. And then, you know, and then the the following days, I, my my awareness was heightened. Like my my um, clairvoyancy, my clairaudience, my clairsentience. You know, all of the clairs. They um, they um, are more or less activated by this, and then and then it just faded, and then the next explosion would come, and then it would get heightened, and then it would fade again, and that's how it was for like five years, and then I had this experience where, um, yeah, and that was really really uh, hardcore, where where um, I had like a full body orgasm. Uh, and then two very powerful kundalini sweeps up the spine resulting in me um, and that's in the same day like um, resulting in me uh, coming into a totally different state of, of, 
of being. And after that, then my Kundalini has been uh, awake like 24 hours a day. Um, and it's only growing stronger. So, uh, and it's changing me on, on many levels and opening up loads and loads of different layers in the soul and, and in my possibilities here. Yeah. So, uh, when you were when you uh, started this, then you were meditating and stuff. After this Kundalini explosion, did you keep meditating, or was it not necessary anymore? Well, I still meditate, but I, I don't meditate that often as I as I used to. Like now, it's more like uh, maybe every other day or every third day or something like this, because it really just it really you know I don't need to meditate that much to get like access to immense amounts of energy. Yeah. Um, but in in the in the in this, you know in the beginning like the first years of going through this i was meditating and, and doing lots of yoga and, and at some point i also changed my diet uh cleansed that up and um, and so um yeah that that you know kind of came by itself somehow like now what you're saying you've got these access access to immense amounts of energy and i guess this ties in a bit with the like the heart transmission because like in order to do some kind of like transmission I mean there's a couple of things which maybe people are curious about because like if you're doing a heart transmission one is what are you transmitting two mm -hmm. is why would I want that um, three um, uh, like it like the the energy is that like what the the, um, the heart transmission is this like the energy transmission, is this more of like a cleansing process or is it an energetic, is to raise energy or is to do cleansing on the other person? What is the purpose of the transmission? And also, and, and what would you, how would you describe, you got all this immense energy, but how would you characterize that energy? Um, so I'm going to start by, uh, by the, uh, the heart transmission. Yeah. Like, uh, so what I do is that I omit or I, I, I direct Kundalini energy into the hearts of the people that are participating in, in the, um, this event, uh, which is an hour long thing. Like in the beginning, we, you know, I, I, I tap into the, uh, you might call it the, the zeitgeist of the time or like the, what's happening in the energies which are coming into the cosmos from the cosmos into our level. And so I, I put words on that and then, um, uh, and then I start uh, transmitting the energy uh, before I, I transmit the energy. I ask people if it's okay that I work in their field because I'm not only transmitting the energy. I'm also like actively cleansing the auras of those there, sometimes getting rid of entities and stuff. Um, I'm protecting their auras, putting um, a lot of protection around them and um, yeah, cleansing their chakras. And this is like a, a long list of things that I do while people are in the <laughs> transmission. And so uh, so it's like um, um, uh, an you know, uh, meant to be an assistance to people who are on a spiritual path. Yeah. Like uh, that it's, and it's, and it's, it's doing that. Like, and that's, that's what I feel is just so awesome in having, having uh, started this and, and maintaining it and still doing it is that, that to see that, that the effects that it is having on the people that are coming, that it's really benefiting them. And it's, um, yeah, I've, I've heard someone talk about a, a heart gasm, like two or three people and I've heard like, um, you know, there have been per people there that have just vibrated all over their bodies and getting cleansed in many different ways. And uh, yeah, it's just a really powerful thing. And, and there's also those that come there and they don't feel a thing. Like, and that's, that's, that's weird to me somehow. I don't know why that happens. Huh. Uh, I, I think a lot of that sometimes just like uh, individual sensitivity and openness, openness to the experience too. Because some people like you're saying are more like spiritually minded and they're actively like yeah. they're trying to engage because these like fields of consciousness are quite, they're very subtle, right? It is. So, yeah. and so if you're quite guarded and closed and you're not sort of, you know, you might not actually feel it, which is interesting because one of the things I was going to say to you is like, uh, like how does it affect people? Like, like is, 
obviously a hard transmission is going to attract people who are in a spiritual path. But yes. some people are going to come along who are like curious. And you know, like some people are sort of on like, a, they're not in a spiritual path yet, but they're on like a self-help path. They're trying to like better themselves. That's kind of how I started. I was like reading Tony Robbins books and all this stuff. Like I need to, I need to be more wealthy and all this kind of stuff. Right. And it was kind of like, uh, which sounds crazy, but it was like a slow path into the, uh, into this other sort of spiritual aspect. But I wonder if like, um, like when, like some of these energies are so subtle that maybe it does affect people in subtle ways. Like for example, it always affects people, but, but, the, uh, but the thing is that, that how, how does it affect people? Like most, yeah. you know, as I say, like most of those that come are, are, are greatly benefiting. And then there are, are, um, are, you know, once in a while someone there who, who doesn't feel it. And then it's like, uh, that they are, they are, maybe they're focusing on other stuff or maybe, uh, they're you know they're not used to having focus on these different levels uh but but they still feel that they get like uh yeah. a better well-being or that they get like a uh, that it's it's soothing or calming or like you know creating more peacefulness in their system or something like this that's usually what they say but it, everyone that comes gets something out of it and and most are being greatly assisted on their spiritual path of those that are there Sometimes, you know, now I think we've had like two Kundalini awakenings happening during or three, I guess. Wow. But I don't, I, I, I never try and, and give people awakened Kundalini. I, I want to just have that happen spontaneously. If it's meant to happen, then, you know, then that's fine. So, yeah. yeah. Now, one of the things that's interesting about all the stuff you're doing is you're kind of, it seems like you're kind of working with the Truth Dojo, right? You, you're kind of like an integral part of that now with Joshua and... Katie, yeah. Katie, yeah. yeah so, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not partaking in the Truth Dojo uh, anymore uh, okay. since, uh, since like the Truth Dojo has taken a different turn. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. so, so, so for myself, like that's... I want to, I want to stay on this spiritual line, which is very much for me. So, um, yeah, I, mean, I think the truth dojo is more about sort of like, uh, it's almost like more psychological, I think in some ways, right? Yes. And yeah. you're sort of more focused on just like pure energy kind of yes. stuff, right? Yeah. You might say that. Yeah. But, but yes, I have a really good relationship with Joshua and Katie and, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I really, I really love them and we have a really beautiful relationship and, uh, they're like really good friends of mine. Yeah. Yeah, they're nice people. Um, yeah. Now, when um, like you're saying, you're doing these transmissions, and some people are starting to feel like their own Kundalini experience is beginning. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so what happens? Like you go to Kund you you go to a couple of uh, heart transmissions, and then afterwards, like you start having these experiences. Um, uh, can people work with you after that? Like maybe people like. Maybe they start having good experiences and they feel like you did. Like, wow, this is like this is this is pretty heavy, man. Now, yeah. when you when you had your experiences, did you have anybody to talk to? Because that was probably yeah. before the internet was a big thing. And um, yeah. well, and the internet was a big thing back then, but but no, there was there wasn't anyone knowledgeable about Kundalini actually. So the the only you know being Icelandic, talking to Icelandic people about this, then uh, their way of 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 describing this was you know, uh, an old way of talking about it, which was to be touched by God. And that's what they said that this was. Ah. Yeah, you are touched by God and therefore so-and-so. So they had like, a, but but not really, um, no, not, not a lot of help, no. I it's interesting because what, what you're actually saying there is that when we talk about Kundalini, it seems kind of esoteric and like it's from India. And like, why would I want something from India? Because I'm Icelandic, I'm Scottish, I'm American, whatever. But yeah. what you're suggesting is that actually, <clears throat> even in little Iceland, there's like some kind of tradition here. Like, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's right. Right. like it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Like the Kundalini is just a word, uh, but the energy is, is, has many names. Um, and so, so yeah, I, mean, I think, uh, they, they, I think they, might, like, they might go the Holy spirit, spirit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this kind of thing. So, um, do you think it's like, because um, a lot of people might, uh, 
Well, I mean, my experience with Kundalini is like, I was never religious at all. You know, I was really turned off by the church and everything and not into it. And I was really, I was really like rejected religion and, con and, and concepts from religion. Even if they might be valid, I would just reject them. Okay. So um, I wonder like um, how that, uh, is that important? Is it important? Like a lot of people, though, I don't want, a lot of people might say, I don't want anything to do with religion. So is this, a, is Kundalini uh, connected with religion somehow or no? Yeah, I mean, you might say that, that Kundalini is re connected in re to religion in such a way that those that get Kundalini active are, are those that have the access points to the teachings which were meant to be in religions, which, you know, of course got obscured under way. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, 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 I would say that, that the Kundalini is very bound to religion. Uh, yeah. And very like much. People, so. But, 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 like but you know, of course, you don't have to be religious to, to be a Kundalini human. Like, that's for myself personally. Like, I'm a, I'm a Christian Hindu with a Buddhist twist doing yoga and meditation. Like, that's, you know, so it's not like, a, um, and I don't take it seriously. So, um, but. Um, yeah, I saw, I saw. Uh, uh, or I read a book recently by Adya Shanti, who's like a, a Zen Buddhist uh, guru. But he was yeah. talking, his book was about Jesus and how actually the whole Jesus experience was really, was really about the, uh, the um, emergence of consciousness and energy in humanity. And that was really what it was all about. So I think while Kundalini maybe seems esoteric, it's actually what a lot of the religions have been trying to teach us, but yes. but they've got but the but the original message has been hidden underneath metaphors, hundreds of years of twisted narratives, and like in a way, it's difficult for your average person to decipher that. So the hard yes. transmission maybe is a way to cut through all the confusion and have a direct experience. Now that's interesting. What do you think? That, what do you think's faith versus direct experience? Right? Is it better to be a faithful, like, oh, I just believe that everything's good, or is it better to have the direct experience and just know? Yeah, I mean, I'm a knower. Like, I don't, I don't do faith. Like, I do knowing. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm not a seeker. I'm a finder. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And. Um, where do you think, like, you've had all these experiences with Kundalini, where do you think it's leading you personally in life? Is leading you to help other people? Is leading you to, like, a more illuminated state or both? Well, um, I've, I've always had this, this thing of, of, like, helping people or, like, being there for others. Like, I've always been, like, very loving and gentle and kind and so on. So, so I, I can't say that it's that it's creating that in me because that's always been there. Um, but what I can say is that, that I have more opportunities to help people today than I used to. Uh, because now like it's, 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 I just read people's energies and I can see how they're doing. Sometimes I hear their thoughts and so on. Um, and it's not, um, um, yeah. And, and with that, then, then I can use those tools to help people like this. That's beautiful. Um, um, and the transformations that come out of it are, is is like amazed. I, I am amazed. Like I am, I am, you know, really touched and humbled by by being used in this way. And that's really how I feel. Like I feel that this energy and this consciousness is actually taking me over more and more. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm losing, uh, I'm losing personality structure uh, with time. Um, things that you know used to be very central are, are today forgotten yeah uh, and, and, and at, at some points like the life that i've lived before is like feels like a story someone else told me like it's like an echo of something that used to be which now is gone so it's like um um it's really weird to go through these transformations but it's you know i'd never Personally, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, be without it. So um, yeah. this is what I came here for, I guess. I was talking to somebody the other day online, and uh, we just met online, and she mm -hmm. was telling me about uh, 
like she needs to, she's going through some difficult spiritual times and she was saying to me like, I need to be in my own power and I'm a warrior against the evil forces and very, very strong vision. But I wonder, you know, like uh, the way you talk, you're talking about like the sort of disintegration of the importance of this personal narrative, right? Where it's yep. like, you're not fighting against evil forces. You're just sort of, uh, uh, you're just sort of, releasing like in a way you're releasing um like I, I think with her it was like she was so focused on her personality structure and her her role in some grand narrative whereas with you it's more like it's sort of a letting go and allowing your personality to be like filled with this greater force and it seems mm -hmm. like a much more uh powerful and sane and healthy way of doing this maybe do you think like in in modern society and this is this is like in modern society, like people seem to be caught up with various narratives which are quite negative about yeah. their lives and their role in the lives. And mm -hmm. maybe um, maybe part of the Kundalini transmission, I mean, not at first, but maybe part of the transmission when you start receiving this energy is to allow yourself to be, um, to be touched by a force greater than ourselves and not, yes. not grip on so tightly to the personality structure, right? Yeah. Um, one of the things you did with me when we were working is we did like some work working through different stages of personality structures, talking about structures of anger, structures of shame, uh, various other structures. And um, that's something people can work with with you because it's one thing to receive energy, but like some of these things you actually have to work through consciously, right? Sure. Like, uh, like if when you have Kundalini active, and that's where I mostly want to be working with people is you know, those that have Kundalini active, uh, not that I don't work with people that don't have Kundalini active, I do that also, and, and I take great joy in doing so. And, uh, but but my area of expertise is Kundalini, and, and I, I do uh, guide Kundalini people through the process. And that that's very different from the one individual to the other. But, and there are like, uh, like, rules or let's say there are laws in this that that you can't really go around like when you have loads of energy in your body then everything in your body gets loads of energy so yeah. so like uh, you you can't say that that your your protective ego which i've learned to call it like the protective ego which is that which uh let's say disconnects us from life because we need to get protected right um so that also gets the energy you see so um so to go through the process of having kundalini active is also to see through uh the parts of you who are not necessarily uh capable of you know handling big amounts of kundalini energy so we need to work with ourselves and we need to um go through many different levels of healing and so on in order to being able to be in good conduits or you know good carriers of this light uh in our bodies here on this planet so um and also like just just you know the initial years the first years of going through this transformation can be very hard and confusing and so on and um and i think it's very important for kundalini people to get grounded with their energy and that's 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 what i that's this is my calling is to help help there like to um yeah to stabilize kundalini in the human body that's what i want to be able to do and that's what i do so yeah and part of that is dealing with these psychological issues and attachments sure. it's, it's, very, it's, well, it's right? very it's a very uh, big plethora of, of a multitude of things that you have to be able to maneuver around so yeah uh, yeah really amazing you know it's such it an is. amazing experience and um mm -hmm. and you know more power to you i mean it takes uh it takes um i mean it takes confidence but also just like like self-knowledge and the and the confidence that the the force is moving through you in order yes. to in order to know that you can you can help people. You know, for me myself, I'm starting to feel some of that emerging. Like I can see things, and then you're like, not quite ready to do that yet, you know. But it's interesting, like, uh, to see where you're at now, and you're quite thank you for this development. You know, appreciate it. Yeah. It's really thank cool. Um, yeah. Anyway, that, there's there's something that I want to say, and it's like, um, and 
ways of perception of you know people on a spiritual path and so on um so there's a lot of different ways to perceive someone like myself who comes forth to say that i want to be able to help and i have all of this power and, and so on and so forth and that's and that's how things are um i am in no way a master of anyone like um I like the word guru, but I don't want it to be used about myself. The only reason why I like it is because the word guru means darkness and the word ru means light. So someone who carries you from darkness to light. And that's basically everyone out there. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So there's like a world guru and I really love that word guru. So I like the word guru, but please, I know I'm not, you know, and I, I don't want to have anything to do with stuff like this. Like, yeah. If, so there's only, there's only one self here. And so to be, um, to be a master, then you would have to have mastered that one self for yourself. Yeah. And you can't master it for others. So the only master you can be a master to or a disciple or whatever you can be a master to is yourself. Yeah. So I like to, I like to um, not, not play in these words at all like I, i'm just i am a brother and i love people and that's yeah. it well yeah. that's my experience with you because we've been talking for a couple of years now and we just they're like down to earth no none of this extra stuff about call me guru or whatever it's just like hey brother what's up and always helpful and the whole thing so i and think for myself like personally like i'm still a work in progress and no matter where you are on the spiritual path, you're always a work in progress. Right. So, yeah, you're, you, you always have a possibility to grow some more. You're always manifesting some more. So, uh, and, and I, like to, I like to not be hiding anything when it comes to my progresses. Like, I want to be open with the people that are there so, so that they, you know, can see that it's okay to have a progress. It's okay to be in your own processes. Yeah. Uh, and, and no matter where you are, there's no need to, to, to uh, act as if that, even though that you've had Kundalini for years and years and so on, you don't have to, to, to uh, you know, be something better or whatever. We're, we're just, you know, the Kundalini is pretty much the human inheritance. And in, in receiving the human inheritance, that's, that's what we're doing pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, some people do get carried away with those words like guru and stuff. But I mean, my experience yeah. with you is you've got like a pretty, you know, and you, that, that was like my first interaction with you is you, you came to me like this, like high level integrity, like, uh, you, you know, you, you can't lie. You must always be honest and all this stuff. And I'm like, Hey, hold, hold on. Man. <laughs> right? But it was like this, but it was like the, but it was like the focus on like integrity, which I think is important when people are talking about gurus, because there's so many, there's so many, um, stories about people who don't have integrity and it's yeah. good to know that somebody, and that was the subject we were on. Yeah. 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 And so I think it's good for people uh, to know, like my experience with you, while varied, there's always been of absolute integrity. I, I can never say anything about that, you know, ever, right? So, um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think that's probably good, Elmar. I think um, it was really nice uh, having the chat with you. I hope this um, opens up what's possible during the, the heart transmission. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Now, now, now we call it the golden heart transmission, yeah? Why did you change the name? Oh, because uh, there's a lot of people that, that don't understand Kundalini and, you know, when, when it came to the event or, or, um, uh, or the group, then uh, a lot of time was used on explaining that. So it's like, uh, and, and for people that's like, uh, let's say, just too much or, or they, don't, they don't, you know, they don't understand what Kundalini is. So, yeah. uh, so instead, just, uh, you know, Kundalini, you can say that it's also golden colored energy. Like, <laughs> so, so I said golden heart Kundalini, no, golden heart transmission. Um, oh, or was it Sebastian or, yeah, I think it was Sebastian who, who, who made, made the name. It was really nice, actually. So, yeah. And the people and, are interested, where, where can they find you? Is that on your website or? 
Well, I have a website. Um, it's uh, trueparticipation.com slash the golden heart. Okay. Um, and I also have a, a Instagram is uh, Hilmar, no, Kundalini underscore Hilmar. Uh, that's my Instagram. And then you can find me on Facebook under Hilmar uh, Rapson. Cool. Well, what I'll do is I'll put those links under the video um, and uh, people can can hit you up to see what um, to see what's cooking with the Golden Heart Transmission. But uh, yeah. thanks for coming on, Hilmar. It's always a pleasure chatting with you, man. All right, and um, talk to you soon, yeah? Yeah. Okay. One love. One love. <laughs>